Hey, good morning, everyone. So uh, just give it a little bit of time and or a few more minutes to see if more people join. Good evening. <laughs> morning hey, good morning michael Are you Michael? You're in uh, in Texas, or no? I'm not in Texas. I'm stuck in Beijing. So I can't oh, go Beijing. back. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a night for me. It's in, this is my office. It, is everything open there? Uh, the offices and oh yeah, in China, yeah. It's as if nothing has happened. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, the uh, the foreign travels are all closed, so that you know um, they, they don't let foreigners come in. Uh, no. What about people from there? Can they go out? They, yeah, they if you go out, out, if you go out, you pretty much can't come back. That's a problem. If you leave, you I can't see. come back. <laughs> I see. I see. I think uh, maybe we can get started. I mean, this is uh, three minutes past the hour. Uh, other people might join in, but yeah, we can get started. We're excited to have you here to talk about SS3M. Uh, yeah. On second state, uh, WebAssembly virtual machine runtime. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, WebAssembly is uh, a newer technology and then Excited to hear more about it, uh, how you can run workloads uh, using WebAssembly. All right, hi. Hey, good morning. Hi, good morning. So shall we wait for a couple minutes more or uh, shall we just start? We can, we, we can start. Yeah. Okay. So um, is it possible to give me the, um, you know, let me share my screen? You know? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Can you can let me try that? Um, sorry. So we, we usually have this interactive session, so I mean, might be able to, we're gonna interrupt you at times. Yeah. We have a, yeah. Yeah. Some absolutely. questions. Please. So um, uh, you guys can see my screen, right? Yep. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, um, first of all, it's a, it's a real real pleasure to um, to be able to present to um, this group. You know, that's uh, um, so. The thing I, I want to talk about is called SSVM, and it's a very unimaginative name. It's called Second State Virtual Machine. <laughs> it's uh, SSVM, and it's a WebAssembly virtual machine that is um, designed for the out of the browser. Um, uh, host environment. So, um, as you know, the the the, the WebAssembly standard was was developed um, for, I would say, a, a second fast, um, you know, a virtual machine runtime inside of the browser, other than the JavaScript, uh, you know, virtual machine. So, um, it has been, do, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it has made made some progress in that area. But uh, I think people, uh, especially in recent years, you know, coming from the folks from the, the blockchain world and then from the server side, you know, uh, people are in, uh, increasingly interested in running WebAssembly outside of the browser. Um, for uh, full timers like myself, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very similar to the path that Java has taken, you know, uh, back in 
1997 and uh, you know all the way to you know early 2000s when I was um, you know when I had a startup that doing Java application server right you know um, at the time you know we all remember this Java applet story right it's running inside of the browser and then but in the end you know it's uh, um, it, it, it becomes successful as a server side technology that's also where we see you know uh, perhaps uh, web assembly runtime is going um, but time since changed with some significant difference um, you know, back in the days when we still have Moore's law, you know, uh, performance isn't such a big issue, and the developer productivity is 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 the, the predominant issue. So the Java virtual machine is pretty much designed um, uh, to trade, um, you know, um, uh, developer productivity for performance, at least at the time when 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 it was first developed, right? Of course, a lot of optimization has been done over the years and made it much faster now. But WebAssembly is uh, is designed from ground up to be very fast and uh, to be high performance, so that it can, um, you know, it can take advantage of, you know, it can take full advantage of the hardware. So, but it also tries to um, preserve um, developer productivity in terms of, you know, cross-platform compatibility, which is more of an issue now than in the past because. I think we have much more, uh, many more, um, you know, uh, operating systems and chip architectures on the um, on the server side than say 1997 when there's you know um, um, you know pretty much just a few um, you know CPU architectures back then, and now we have like AI chips, GPUs, and you know a, a bunch of those stuff, and we also have a much longer history of the Linux operating system. We have operating system dating all the back to 10, 20 years ago and still being used in production, right? So, so those are the things, um, and, and, and uh, you, you know, that's, uh, I think those are the things, um, of what I think uh, WebAssembly would be set out to, uh, to solve. And uh, uh, we're also, uh, where we think that it could be a good fit for the, the um, Cloud Native Foundation, you know, because I have worked with Linux Foundation in the past, and uh, I really like how the, uh, how the community works. Oh, by the way, I used to work at Red Hat, so that's my uh, you know connection um, with uh, Linux, right? You know, so um, yeah, so so that's um, but so you know that's the introduction. Where I come from, where this uh, where this um, you know SSVM virtual machine come from? So uh, it's a popular web, uh, you know, well, we call it the popular web assembly virtual machine optimized for high performance applications. And uh, um, it has a GitHub repository. It's a, it's an open source project from day one. So uh, if I may, perhaps I should uh, um, show you the, the the GitHub page. You know, that's uh, let's see that. Um, can you guys see, see see this screen? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. So you know, it's a. Uh, um, for infrastructure project, it's it's fairly popular. It has like seven hundred stars. So I know it's not. It's um, it has been around for two years. So from from day one, you know, there's over close to a thousand commits, but mostly from um, you know um, uh, from from developers in 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 a in a close group. You know, that's um, the second state of the company and people who are associated with us. So those so. Um, I wouldn't say it has a very large, you know, uh, country and committer and developer community yet. That's also one of the reasons we want to join uh, CNCF as a as a sandbox project, right? So that we can, um, you know, develop uh, so that we can collaborate more with the developers in the community. So it's a uh, um, so um, you know, there's some people who like it, you know, seven hundred people who like it, and you know, there's um, you know, um, people who contributed code, and. Uh, um, as you know, there's fairly comprehensive documentations in terms of where to run, how to run on different versions of Linux operating system, and how to build it. You know how to, um, you know how to run for advanced tasks like you know AI inference, so how to um, how, how it works with TensorFlow and all that things. So you know that's uh, um, so it may be interesting to to um, to take a look. You know in terms of you know um, what this project is and what's its history and uh, you know. Um, you know, and 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 just download the code and play with it, and play with it yourself. You know, if you're you very interested. So this is uh, so this is uh, um, the project, and it's it's a GitHub page, and uh, uh, perhaps the most important slides um, in this, um, you know, in my, you know, prepared presentation. You know, just uh, feel free to interrupt me at any time because it, um, because uh, I want to talk about. For uh, six application scenarios where SSVM in particular and WebAssembly in general um, can bring value to the cloud native ecosystem.
ecosystem. So, you know, and people say, you know, we have, you know, um, on the server side, we have, you know, we have uh, Docker, we have Kubernetes, we have all those, you know, why, um, you know, Docker and Kubernetes, Kubernetes probably, up, you know, give you uh, the full operating system capacity. You know, you can run any application that, or any framework that you would normally run on the Linux operating system in those containers. Why do you need something um, that is potentially even more limiting, you know, that's uh, because on WebAssembly, you can't run the operating system. So you have, uh, you have a clear boundary in terms of, you know, what type of application that you can run. You, you need to conform to some kind of SDK, you know, things like that. So, you know, that's, uh, um, so people ask that question. So, um, so those are the things that we see uh, in the market, you know, um, that's, uh, that's uh, people use our product and people use other uh, server-side WebAssembly product to do, right? You know, um, and the first is what we call Gemstack applica web applications. So um, Gemstack, this refers to um, JavaScript, API, markup. You know, so it's a, uh, the idea is to use a, a static website generator um, like Hugo or Next.js or um, what's the other popular web? And Gatsby, and Gatsby, right? You know, so um, you use those applications to generate a static website and uh, distribute those static web pages through CDNs. And then, um, 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 and then those big front ends uh, have JavaScript in them. They um, um, provide interactivity through uh, APIs on the back end. So it's, it's provide a complete separation from the front end and then the back end. And so, so the front end can be distributed um, in any way you want. It can be GitHub pages. It can be, um, you know, um, like I said, it can be CDNs. Can it can even be a blockchain project? You know, can um, say IPFS, right? You know, so it it can you can distribute it just like files and in any way you want. And then you host the, um, the the interactive piece, the web services on the back end. So that's um, that way of developing web application has gained a lot of popularities in the past. I think in the past two, three years, you know, that's, um, um, you know, a lot of developers I love that, especially with, uh, you know, with, um, you know, GitHub providing GitHub pages for free, you know, a lot of people are doing that, you know. So um, the key issue in Gemstack application is to provide simple and easy to use APIs on the back end to talk to the front end JavaScript. So um, WebAssembly plays a role here because it can provide very lightweight, uh, what we call serverless functions. You know, meaning in the cloud, you instead of um, um, the front end application needs to perform some functionality, for instance, send an SMS message to, to some user for, for, for logging or to query a database, you know, something, uh, something of that nature, that you need a really light uh, function to be executed on the back end. Um, there's cloud providers who would provide you serverless functions, you know, like AWS Lambda and all that. Um, but the problem is um, they are fairly heavyweight because, you know, they are. Um, virtual machine based or container based. So, you know, so um, um, you basically are setting up an operating system and they run Python or Node.js in it, right? So that's, um, you know, um, people have, you know, have a lot of discussions of this type of architecture to say it's a, it's a, uh, it's a fairly uh, wasteful in terms of, you know, resource use. And uh, it also has a problem of code, uh, code start time, it's too, uh, too low. And it's also not CDN friendly. You know, so you have all those front end uh, files, static um, uh, website is being that's generated from your um, from your framework, that you distributed them through CDN for performance reasons to the uh, close to your customers. However, your your back end services is still in centralized cloud. You know, people still need to go all the way back to AWS in order to you know uh, in order to log in. You know, something like that. You know, so that's um, not the ideal architecture. So companies like uh, Fastly and uh, um, Cloudflare uh, come up with those ideas of serverless functions on the on, uh, on edge nodes, right? You know, so they would say, you know, um, we um, would provide uh, serverless functions um, uh, that execute untrusted user uploaded functions, you know, on, uh, um, and that's closer to the edge node um, on the CDN network. And uh, the, the way to do that is not through Docker or uh, more heavy containers. It's through very light, um, you know, language-based language virtual machines like WebAssembly. So that's, um, that's um, basically how the, I would say the edge computing industry is moving, um, is, is trying to move that, that direction, right? So, you know, so that's um, one category of 
uh, applications. I'll, I'll give you, um, you know, a full page of links which you can try out, you know, the applications we built this way. You know, the, there's uh, AI inference, there's uh, image processing and all that. So, you know, those are Jamstack applications. All the front end is just GitHub pages. And the back end is serverless functions, and the serverless function is executed on a lightweight VM and SSVM or other WebAssembly VM would fit that bill. So that's one area of um, you know where we see um, you know cloud-based WebAssembly. Where does it fit? It could fit into uh, this you know Jamstack. And the second is um, more of uh, more of what I would say uh, the the traditional JVM or Java use case is cool is to and provide a unified API for something that is complex, right? So here is example is to provide a unified API for AI inference. So um, as we know, you know, that's uh, um, uh, deep learning and AI has, um, you know, um, has gained a lot of attention in the past couple of years. And uh, um, to train an AI model, there's lots of books about that. And, uh, you know, they tell you how to do Python and do that. However, to deploy an AI model in production has always been quite difficult. You know, there's TensorFlow servers, there's, uh, you know, there are lots of things you need to mess around in order to get Python and everything else work together. And it's not super efficient because, um, because um, in order to do it efficiently, you, you really need access to things like, you know, um, GPU at least, but custom hardware is probably the, the best thing. On AWS, there's A1, right? You know, things like that. So there are a lot of things the, uh, you have to do at deployment. Um, for developers to um, um, to write code that's specific to the develop to the deployment platform is, I would say, a pre-Java days, right? <laughs> you know, when you know that's uh, you know you write a web application, you have to know its underlying architecture is sounds Spark, right? You know, not x86 Linux, right? You know, that's uh, so. Um, um, I think that's a huge burden for developers. And in our particular case, you know, we uh, we partnered with Tencent Cloud. You know, they have a um, uh, they have a they have a serverless business that basically use Docker containers to run serverless functions, right? And the Docker containers in uh, in question runs uh, CentOS seven, which is about ten years old, and doesn't even run TensorFlow. TensorFlow doesn't even you know you can't even compile TensorFlow for that particular. Um, um, for that particular environment. And uh, uh, from the developer point of view, it's, it'd be very difficult to get it working because you know um, you need to first choose which AI framework gonna work in that environment. Is that IPTensorflow TensorFlow or ONX or something else? And then um, you need to um, uh, figure out the exact, the, the, the exact configuration, the operating system that's running so that you can static link newer versions of glibc uh, into, uh, into your stack in order to get it running, right? So you know um, we um, so the way the WebAssembly um, virtual machine works is that it can abstract away all those issues. So we can have all those issues pre-configured by us um, in collaboration with Tencent. Um, you know that's uh, one cent for all, and then we provide a language level API in Rust and in Swift and in TypeScript. Right? You know that's uh, uh, to developers, and de um, um, the API basically allows developer to say. You know, load my AI model, and here's the input tensor. Uh, run the model, and here are the output tensors. You know, so those are the fair, very generic ways to run, um, you know, um, uh, AI models in a unified API. And then the WebAssembly runtime at um, on the deployment platform figures out how to route those those computational tasks. Right? Could it is this run? Is this execute? Because I'm now running on Tencent serverless, so this should be run on um, you know, should be executed by, by TensorFlow on CPU. Or if I'm on AWS, this could be run by, by say, um, PyTorch, by, by OX, by OX runtime on the A1 process. You know, that's, so, so those are the things that we try to uh, make things easier for developers so that they can uh, provide more, another abstraction layer on top of the operating system at the language level. So, um, pretty much things that Java has done uh, 25 years. Uh, I have a question. So, yes, yes uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, this is really interesting. So, um, uh, the, the WebAssembly modules, when, when you're serving a model, I mean, I guess you will, you, you will still have something like TensorFlow serving in the back end, right? So, and yes. then, and, and uh, like this will be just the API layer. And, uh, and, and I suppose. Uh, this could actually live anywhere. It could also live at the edge, or because they're very light uh, weight modules. And yes. Um, so, 
have you seen some use cases yet where people maybe where do they put the WebAssembly modules with respect to the the server and the instance uh, where they have the actual you, you mentioned that you can have it in AWS or you can have it in somewhere else, but then um, is it better to be closer to the edge or, 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 or have you seen use cases where they just put it anywhere or you haven't seen any use cases? Well, and, I, yeah. and I guess this, and I guess that same question applies to the, the web apps, right? Because uh, uh, you have this really lightweight modules, but, but then they still need to talk to a backend um, and that backend actually could live anywhere, right? They could, they, it could be an AWS, could be a database, or it could be a Kafka broker or whatever, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um, I think we are still, you know, um, um, the the whole landscape or the whole industry is, is still in its early stage, you know. So um, where we want to go is to have those WebAssembly modules directly deployed on the edge nodes. And the edge nodes could be a variety of different nodes, right? It's not just uh, um, you know, uh, the public cloud edge where I think uh, are pretty far network edges, but also um, especially in China, you know, you, you'd have you know, um, uh, small data centers in factory where the government has subsidized, right? You know? And uh, you know, that's one of the things where the government has so much power, you know, the government tells all the factories that you need to modernize and build a data center in each of them. And then um, they have nothing, they build the data center and they have no, no, no tasks to run because there's not so much computational intensive tasks in, in the factory, right? And so they, they unplug the power plug, right? You know, so, so basically it's they're completely idle or it's not even powered up, um, you know? So there's all kinds of computational capabilities um, out there like that. And uh, um, our goal is really to, uh, to work with, um, you know, uh, edge cloud providers, right? You know, to have them because they have access to resources like that. They have resources to the spare com uh, computational capacity in 5G towers, for instance, right? Or, you know, that's uh, um, you know, a lot of those infrastructure projects. So, you know, um, they, can all, they can put them together and they can run WebAssembly on them so that they can provide computational services for residents in the city, in the nearby city. Right, and, you know that's uh, um, you know although those things are originally designed for the factory, but the factory is not using it, might not use it for something else, right? You know, it could do um, it could process images from the dog camera. You know, there's lots of things that you can do, but you know, um, and WebAssembly now provides a much um, you know much more efficient way of doing that. And uh, as we would say, uh, as we would see later, it's, um, it also provides it provides more efficiency on the operating side. It provides it is more developer friendly because, um, uh, especially for AI applications, because it's uh, it's not constrained by the operating system that's running inside Docker. You know, although Docker is or the container is is uh, is standard, but you can run any operating system in there. That's become very very non-standard, right? So you know that's uh, um, um, so it's developer friendly. It's operational oper operationally efficient, and it's also um, um, well, yeah, that's, that's, um, you know, that's, uh, but the trade-off of course is, um, it's not as flexible as Docker. So, so, so right now you see a mixture of those, uh, both. And, uh, we would even see, uh, you know, that's, uh, uh, so if you ask me what people are running on the Docker, um, uh, sorry, what people are running on the edge today, you know, those are, um, you know, that's like QBH projects, which is just, CNCF project, you know, that's uh, use Kubernetes to to um, to spin up, you know, containers on those projects, and uh, you know, so so there's a variety of different ways of doing that. And uh, uh, is WebAssembly mainstream yet? No, but that's we are hoping to make it more mainstream. You know, so that's uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, that's um, so that's really leads uh, lead us to the next um, you know uh, topic, which is edge devices. So um, that's also where we collaborate with, um, you know, um, um, people like um, in the industrial, um, you know, situation where, you know, you have those um, new uh, software driven cars, you know, that's, uh, you know, all those electric cars after Tesla, they are all just uh, giant computers sitting on batteries and wheels, right? They're not cars anymore, they're just computers, you know, and uh, you need a lot of software in them. And, uh, you know, that's people 
say, oh, you know, the car has a lot of software. That's, um, and in reality, it is, you know, that's, um, you know, we worked with, um, you know, that's, um, um, you know, companies that does that. They use Kubeage and the Docker to, to, uh, to run software inside of the car, right? You know, that's um, uh, because the car needs to run a lot of, you know, third party or untrusted software. They use Docker to do that. And this is um, um, for us, uh, from our, I think everybody in this understands it's a huge waste of resources. Um, that's also cost, you know, um, the same that, that you heard over and over again, the car has more software than the spaceship, right? You know, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's because there's so much redundancy, so much, you know, um, uh, complexity of running software in the car. And uh, um, so, you know, that's, that's also the area that we really want to improve the SSVM is to make it, uh, um, is it, to make it run better on those uh, RTOS, you know, real-time operating system like ThreadX, right? You know, and uh, so that, and also access to the um, controlling hardware uh, in the car through, you know, what we call the WebAssembly system interface, WASI interface. So that um, to expand the WebAssembly um, uh, system in that way so that it can be, um, it, it can run software more efficiently inside those, um, uh, Inside the cars, right? You know, so 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 that's um, the third uh, application scenario. Where the edge devices, we, uh, there's lots of different operating system, lots of different hardware that um, that that people have to deal with, and we uh, we hope WebAssembly would provide um, a better abstraction for for developers to target those platforms better. So, yeah, and then of course you know the 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 fourth one and the fifth one are similar. You know, it's a uh, um, it's um, it's you have a large system like a SaaS system or a, a, a IoT messaging system, and uh, um, but this um, when you go to a customer, you need to add um, you know functionalities to it that are specific to the customer. Um, so the traditional way of doing it is through APIs or through um, configuration files, right? You know, that's for easy things, you, you try to configure it. And then for complex things, you have APIs that allow people to call, call your system from outside and make callbacks and, you know, things like that. And uh, we think perhaps um, another approach where I think it's become more and more popular is to make it serverless. So meaning that's in a system, instead of making callback to an external API, I ask developers to upload a piece of software, upload a, a function, and I run it inside my infrastructure. That's, you know, so, and in that scenario, there's a um, um, unknown code that is up uploaded by the developer that has to run inside, uh, uh, um, you know, inside your SaaS system. And uh, um, you need a sandbox for that. And the Docker is too complex or, you know, a traditional application container is too complex and too slow. So WebAssembly is actually quite, uh, quite perfect in, in this particular scenario. And we've seen this um, in quite a few um, uh, large scale projects already. You know, I think uh, in North America, Shopify is probably one of the biggest one that does it. You know, that's uh, their application scenario. It's actually also uh, pretty interesting is that, um, you know, if you if you think about Shopify, it's an it's a, it's a e-commerce um, website builder, right? And uh, um, one of the heavy customization they need to do is uh, they need to give uh, people flexibilities to provide discount or rules at checkout. So if I'm a shop owner, I want to say, if you buy three of this, get four for free, or buy three of this, get the four, um, get the shipping for free. You know, that's there's many rules like that. And uh, um, in the past, they do it with templates, and uh, it's um, prop, um, you know, that's address um, a lot of those needs, but not all of them, right? Um, you could argue a better way is to is to let people uh, upload a small piece of code just use software, use code to describe what they want. And, uh, um, but that creates a situation where, you know, the, the platform has to um, specify, um, you know, has to run this code. And, uh, um, you know, um, in, the, in, the, in a shopping, in an e-commerce checkout scenario, of course, you cannot have, um, say, a callback, you know, something that would take like a second, you know, because, you know, people can abandon their shopping cart if they have to wait for a second. This has to be done in milliseconds, right? You know, so um, the, the, the approach they take, um, you know, um, is to use WebAssembly to run this, uh, to run the user uploaded, uploaded software, right? You know, so user upload a, a piece of code that says, 
you know, how, how do I provide discount in my in, in the items in my shopping cart? And then, you know, they use WebAssembly to run it very fast at checkout on their infrastructure instead of the developer have to set up another server to do the callbacks, right? So um, this is also the work that we do with, um, you know, uh, well, those are two Chinese characters, but this is basically a TikTok's, um, you know, parent company in China, and they have a Slack competitor, you know, believe it or not, you know, so they have a, a work collaboration software uh, by TikTok's parent company in China. And uh, um, the way that they try to expand their platform is also, you know, uh, if you look at, um, you know, uh, their, their current documentation is uh, API based approach. So if, uh, if I, if a user send a message, you send this message, you know, um, it would uh, use the API to do a callback to a server that uh, the, the developer sets up. And then the server comes back with a response, right? You know, that's a typical, uh, uh, a very, you know, standard way to, to provide API services. But, you know, and there's lots of issues with the reliability of the developer's system, whether it's inside China's firewall or not, you know, with, you know, there's uh, what type of security it has, you know, all kind of stuff. So, you know, that's, uh, um, so we thought it's, um, you know, um, a easier way to do it is to just let the developer upload a piece of code and, and uh, you know, the platform runs it, right? You know, so, so those are the, um, so I think those are the two uh, related application scenarios that we have encountered for WebAssembly in the cloud is to have, is as an extension mechanism for, um, for, for a larger platform, like, you know, a SaaS platform, something like that. So then the last uh, one. Sorry, oh, yeah. sorry I, I have a so one question. So can you explain again how how they do that with the with with the chat applications? So they upload a WebAssembly module to the developers upload a WebAssembly module to the the chat application service and and they provide unique fun functionality based on that. Or? Yeah. So um, say you know say it's a chat application. Let's think about Slack, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, on Slack platform, you can write bots, right? You know, the, the, the bots that can yeah. respond to users. And the way mm -hmm. you, you write bots is you register a callback URL with the Slack platform to say, yeah. if my user send a message to the bot, please forward this message as a HTTP request to my server. And my server gonna process it and my server can come up back with a response. And then you send the response back to the user, right? You know, that's the normal way. Right, you know, that's, um, you know, the API platform way. Um, we thought a better way is to say, uh, why do you ask the developer to run the server? Why don't you ask the developer to upload a piece of code? The code basically has an interface that says uh, the input parameter is a string. That's, that's um, is what the user says. And the return value is another string is what the bot says, right? You know, so that's, that piece of code is running inside the messaging application zone platform. So it's never mm -hmm. done, and uh, it. it's, uh, it's it. meet the security requirements and all that stuff that they may have, right? You know, so yeah, yeah. because the sandbox and all that, and yeah, okay, got gotcha, you. Gotcha. So, yeah, so 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 to to do it in, in WebAssembly, I I think the problem is is uh, is worse in China. You know, that's um, because in China you have the um, you have regulations around content. You know, uh, you are not allowed to things that uh, to say things that the government doesn't like, right? You gotcha, know, so. Gotcha. If, uh, if the developer have their own server, you, uh, you, you have to make some, um, you know, um, to check their stuff. And, you know, there's lots of compliance issues. And uh, mm -hmm. to have it all on your own server, on the platform server, you can make it a lot faster. You can make it a lot faster, you know, and, and a lot more compliant. You know? yeah. yeah, it's it's much faster, but also if you end up with like thousands and thousands of WebAssembly modules on your own platform, that there might be some challenges there. Right? So, but... Yes. Yeah, instead of, yeah. Because like when you do a, a call back to an external service, you're doing it to multiple services. Of course, you have the network latency issue, right? In, in this case, you have the WebAssembly module and the whole messaging platform, but you may have hundreds of them, right? So so there may be some scaling issues there, but I think everything has a trade-off, right? Exactly. But that, that, that's also why, um, you know, we are interested in working with developers in CNCF, right? You know, because that's, uh, because the thing that you have just described, how to scale out a thousand WebAssembly instances, right? You know, how to even start them, right? You know, that's uh, that's something you know that's um, that would we consider cloud native. That's um, you know that's um, you know that's what we want to improve on, right? You know, so that's yeah, cool, cool, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So then, the last one, perhaps you know, um, 
It's also a large use case, but perhaps less relevant here is, uh, is uh, as, a, as a runtime for blockchain smart contract. You know, that's, um, I don't know you, uh, how much uh, you guys are, uh, are interested in the blockchain space, but you know, um, um, the first generation of blockchain is the Bitcoin, it's just the ledger, right? You know, just the keeping record of the accounts. And then the second generation of blockchain is what we call Ethereum. You know, that's, uh, it's, uh, it has a, a Turing complete virtual machine on the blockchain. So, you know, instead of doing coin transactions, you can attach a piece of code with a coin transaction. So you execute the, you know, the, 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 the piece of code together with your transaction and all the nodes have to come to agreement, right? You know, that's, uh, um, however, the, the, the Ethereum virtual machine was written by uh, Vitalik when he's 19 years old. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a brilliant piece of software, but it's not, um, you know, what we would call, um, you know, um, um, a well engineered. So, you know, so there, over years, there has a lot of been, been a lot of issues. A lot of people lost money on this thing because, you know, it's so difficult to work with. And uh, um, so essentially after Ethereum, you know, all the next generation blockchains, they all decide to choose WebAssembly because, you know, uh, because there's a larger developer ecosystem around it, less bugs, you know, there's a, uh, LVM compilers and all that stuff, you know, that's that's, that's a completely two, uh, a complete tool chain that you can use. So that's where we, um, you know, um, um, you know, that's where we see a lot of financial interest. You know, in, as you know, Bitcoin is like all time high again. You know, that's uh, so those guys have money. You know, that's that's pretty simple. You know, so it's um, um, you, you, you know, so th this is also one of the areas we see a lot of uh, we see a lot of interest and also developer interest as well. So. So those are the use cases, and uh, um, so I hope I have provided a, a you know, um, you know, introduction of how, why this is needed on the on the cloud, right? And why this is not just something, you know, you should run it inside of the browser. You know, that's there are actually some use cases for for this technology on the cloud. So. Oh, sorry. So the interesting thing about WebAssembly is that um, it has a core specification in W3C, and then it has a number of you know, um, optional proposals. And it has a standardization process that is very similar. Um, well, I wouldn't say very similar, but somewhat similar to the JCP process in the past. So you know, people come up with proposals in terms of what to implement it. And then you implement that, and then the community come up with implementation, and then there will be reference implementation, and then it becomes the the the, the, the proposals graduates, right? You know, so um, so um, aside from the the key, um, you know, uh, virtual machine, um, you know, specification that's originally developed for, for web browsers, you have um, perhaps the most important one is the WASI. It's on on the left side. You know, it's called WebAssembly Systems Interface. It allows WebAssembly to access the operating system features instead of the browser. So inside of the browser, you don't have the concept of a file system. You know, yeah, you have the concept of the DOM on the page. You, um, you, um, you know, so inside of the browser, there's lots of things that are missing. But if you run WebAssembly on the directly on the operating system, you need to get access to give it access to sockets, to uh, to the file system, to you know, that's. Um, so all those things that come standard with uh, with, with operating system. So the, so that is WASI, and the way that they define WASI is expandable. So you can use it to call uh, other native facility because uh, WASI to call operating system essentially is to WASI for GLBC, right? You know, so that's uh, the standard operating system libraries become available. But then you can have other operating system level uh, libraries that makes them available as web uh, web assembly function calls, like. Uh, like I just said, TensorFlow, right? You know, that's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's not part of the operating system, but it's a native library. So you know, you can use it. Um, you can use the same approach to make it available inside WebAssembly. So you know, so so there are many things like that. And uh, um, one of the uh, very interesting thing, um, you know, um, I would say one of the unique features of the SSVM is we try to experiment with as many of them as possible. Try to develop, you know, try to support all of them, and. Uh, um, and and we uh, because we have um, uh, many use, uh, real world use cases, we also try to improve on them. Um, however, one of the issues with the WebAssembly community is that right now there's no um, the W3C has come up when is the place where you come up with the specs. But there's no place for reference implementations, and you know that's uh, um, Fastly and Mozilla 
um, um, uh, and I think Red Hat and uh, Intel, I, I think a bunch of them created an organization called the Bicode Alliance uh, last year. And I think, you know, uh, however, um, we have reached out to them multiple times and other people have reached out to them multiple times. And, it's, and it seems that they are still trying to decide, you know, the governance structure and all that things, you know, so they are not, um, at least uh, to me, they are not uh, very, uh, you know, uh, very eager to uh, engage with uh, new members or other people in the community. Uh, especially with the Mozilla layoff last year, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, uh, Fastly basically hired all the uh, WebAssembly people from, from Mozilla. So now that organization is basically Fastly, just Fastly, right? You know, so that's, uh, um, uh, let me see, okay. Oh, all right, okay. So, 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 so that's, um, I think what's missing from the community. And uh, that's also where we see, um, we, we want to be part of the CNCF to push um, with the Linux Foundation to push this, um, this community forward, right? You know, to, by implementing standards that we can see, we can become the experimental ground for people to experiment, to experiment with more um, WebAssembly, you know, um, um, specifications, right? So that's um, part of the rationale to become the, um, to join. I have a question. So, what is uh, was it socket? Is that you said it's under development, right? Yeah. So that's another standard to provide network access to the SSVN. Uh, different from WASI, basically. So. Yes. So um, the standard WASI is um, uh, unfortunately doesn't include the the network piece. It just has gotcha. a file system and and those. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So it's has, you know, that's um, this new CPU in, in, in infrastructure and all that stuff. So, so, so that's also our rationale to be uh, to to um, to try to join the CNCF, right? Yeah. And then there's um, we experiment with a lot of you know um, what we call non-standard um, WebAssembly extensions, right? You know, so we use the WASI-like technique to connect to um, other native libraries. So um, like I just said, you know, that's, um, and you know, we connect to TensorFlow and other AI frameworks. We connect to say the blockchain specific stuff like Ethereum. On the Ethereum blockchain, for instance, you know, there's no concept of the file system or GLIPC anymore. It's, it only has a file a account system and coins and, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, so those are the, um, you know, um, the way to, um, you know, OWASI is a, is, a, is a way that WebAssembly integrated with the host system. Right, you know, so that's also an area that we really want to experiment with, and, uh, um, and that's also our rationale. Trying to um, be part of the CNCF is to become, um, is to um, engage, to have more engagement with the community, so that it can become the reference implementation of the what, or um, you know, provide a feedback to the spec development at W three C. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, yeah. so uh, yeah. So the other interesting thing about WebAssembly is what we call capability-based security. You know, that's a concept that has been around for a very long time. And uh, it's an operating system concept is to say, you know, that's, uh, um, um, you know, um, for each process or, you know, for, for traditional operating system, um, your uh, privilege or your security is being limited by, by, by your user, right? Here, so this user has a certain amount of um, uh, access you know, that's, uh, um, so if I start this process as a root user, it's gonna inherit all the access permissions that the root user can have. But in WebAssembly, it's different. You can, uh, when you start the WebAssembly virtual machine, you can specify the, um, the access it has, right? You know, you can say this, it can only access the slash temp directory. So even if the WebAssembly virtual machine started by the super user, it can, you can still make it very restricted that only have access to the APIs and to the, the, to the resources that you explicitly specify when you start up the, the virtual machine. So we, uh, so we think, you know, that's uh, perhaps that's a, a minor point in, in the grand scheme of all the things that I talked about. But I think that's, um, you, you know, people keep asking is WebAssembly better, uh, you know, provide a better security than Docker, you know, so all, all the other containers out there. You know, I would say it has the potential to do that, you know, because it has a different security model. Does it do it today? Uh, probably not. You know, it's probably uh, because the ecosystem is still young, right? It doesn't uh, have time to, to fully develop all those features 
but it does have the, the, the potential of doing so because it has a different security model. You know, so. so then this is um, also the point that I touched upon, you know, is that uh, WebAssembly is a way for us to, um, to give, um, to improve developer productivity in, uh, when they use um, you know, uh, high performance languages like Rust and C++ because it abstract away the, the uh, differences in the underlying operating system. So it can be, um, in, in many ways, it can be cross-platform, you know, from, from very old Linux distributing systems in order to learn new ones. And also Windows and, and other things, you know, that's, um, you know, all you need to do is to conform to a specific API that Rust provide you or C++ provide. So, then, of course, there's um... one question is uh, that um, the, the uh, SSVM does it uh, have any requirements as to what Linux kernel it needs to run on? Um, and then are there plans to uh, support some other operating systems like uh, Windows or yeah. Mac OS? Mm -hmm. So, so we don't um, because this is a primary uh, server side story. So. Um, um, we haven't heard a lot of, um, you know, requirements for Windows support, but we can easily do so. It's um, it's another reason to join the CNCF, right? You know, is to have more developers working on it with, with different yeah, needs, yeah. right? And the the thing that is high on our roadmap is to support the RTOS, like Red X, you know, so that mm -hmm. we can support, you know, very limited, you know, um, edge computing cases, like uh, in the automobile, right? You know, so that's uh, so. Um, that's where we think this project is ready to be a part of the community is that, you know, there are certainly a lot of things that we prioritize because our business needs, right, you know, but, you know, we, but we can also see there are other people would want to, you know, um, want to add other things to it, you know, so we, we love to see people to have a WASI implementation for Windows, for instance, you know, that will allow it to be, yeah. be supported on Windows. So, makes sense, makes sense, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so the cloud native support, the thing I want to uh, talk about is, you know, so those are the use cases that we currently have in the cloud. And uh, one of the things that I want to emphasize is that we are, um, you know, we are in the process of making uh, the SSVM WebAssembly virtual machine fully compatible with uh, uh, Kubernetes by conforming to the open, stand, open container initiative. So, you know, so that allows us to use, um, you know, um, uh, KubeH and all the Kubernetes compliant uh, tools. To, to start and manage, um, you know, WebAssembly runtimes. So that's, um, you know, um, partly answers your question, your early questions that if, if this is getting embedded to a large SaaS platform, you could have a thousand instances, how do you manage them, right? You know, that's, uh, so um, hopefully that's, um, you know, um, that in the near future, we will be able to use, uh, you know, the Kubernetes to be able to do that, so. One question is, uh, have you looked at this project called Crosslet they presented? Uh... Yes, uh, they're they're pretty they're they're uh, they're pretty experimental, right? But uh, I mean, their their idea is also to uh, have WebAssembly modules run with Kubernetes. So is this something like it's it's going to be similar to that, or it's going to be slightly different, or or yeah, it's, it, I I think the goal would be pretty much the same, but uh, the technical approach would, might be uh, a little different. You know, that's we modify different part of the operating system in order to achieve that. Because, you know, right now it's all, um, you, you know, uh, to tell you, you have to hack the existing system in order to do that, right? You know, yeah. but that's, uh, um, you know, we just hack at different points, but that's, uh, um, but but I think, but again, I, I think those, those are the things that we're gonna experiment and, 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 and uh, a clearly better solution gonna emerge and we can all use that, you know? <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Okay. So, yeah. Another thing about um, um, uh, using WebAssembly in, in particular, you know, uh, compared with Java, the JVM, like I, I, I draw a lot of, you know, um, parallels between WebAssembly uh, web runtime and, and the JVM. So it's, uh, it truly supports multiple languages on the front end. So um, I, I, I often say Java plus the JVM is roughly equal to Rust plus WebAssembly today, you know, because Rust is probably the best supported front end language for WebAssembly. But it's not the only one. It's uh, Swift is well supported as well. C++ is well supported. C and assembly scripts and all, uh, and those, those other two are you know uh, blockchain languages like FE and Solidity. Those are you know um, um, programming languages that come on the blockchain. So all those are, are well supported on WebAssembly. It's uh, it's it's different than Java where 
you know, there's multiple languages on the JVM are all JVM languages, you know, are all Java, you know, like languages, right? You know, so, so, so those are the difference. And uh, um, so this is pretty much the last, um, you know, uh, important slides is to say, um, we um, did a lot of optimization for WebAssembly, uh, for, for, for WebAssembly, we have two years to do that. And one of the most significant things we did is the AOT, you know, is to do a head of the time compiler optimization. You know, um, this, um, you know, when WebAssembly is used inside the browser, um, the, 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 the way to optimize it is to use GIT because uh, inside of the browser, you never know what what code you're gonna run into next. So you know, so you just have to optimize that as you compile. But on the server, you pretty much know that you're gonna run this piece of code for thousand, for a million times, two million times, right? You know, so you can afford to do ahead of time compiling. You know, that's the first time you see this code. You compile, you know, that's then then you run it much faster. So that's um, so so we so we wrote a paper and published the I triple E software earlier. Uh, early this year, and it's, it's published in, in the January issue. And uh, uh, it compared um, um, uh, SSVM performance with the other leading web assembly runtimes like Google's V8, like, um, um, you know, um, fast list to set, and, uh, um, and also compared with, um, you know, normal Docker. It's Docker without anything else. It's just a plain Docker plus C++ application. You know, there's no Node.js or Python or anything like that. So it's fastest way for you to run Docker. You know, so um, we did all those, and uh, it seems um, you know um, that's you can read that paper, and and I think you know this is VM ROM, um, you know, can uh, outperforms most competitors by fairly large margin. And I think the the reason is AOT. You know, that's uh, um, in, in some cases we um, you know this is VM runs faster than native. You know, without Docker native. And the uh, um, the reviewers was very surprised by this result, and 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 they sent the article back to us to say, you know, this must be wrong. But uh, we ran the test; it was right, you know, because um, with AOT you can optimize for the machine you are running on. You know, that's uh, with the native you you are just uh, optimizing for a class of CPUs, right? You you that's uh, so so um, so yeah, that's um, that really showcases uh, the, the 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 performance characteristics of you know that's. Um, of, uh, you, you know, the, the, the things WebAssembly can achieve. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, I, I would send this, um, you know, uh, slide deck to, to the group that there's lots of examples that we have done, you know, that's, uh, you know, do the image processing, add a watermark to the image, flip the image to do the OCRs, you know, that's, you have an image that I, I can read what's text on it to do um, uh, TensorFlow, um, you know, image processing, like all kinds of image class um, classifications. Those are all live demo um, uh, links. You know, they're live because, you know, it's uh, because of, thanks to Jamstack, right? You know, on the, on the back end it's serverless. So if no one uses it, we pay nothing. On the front end is GitHub pages. It's all static web, set, web pages. So it costs us nothing to keep this demo live. You know, other, uh, you know, um, uh, Unlike the old ways of doing web application, I have to have a server that's, that's, that runs all those demos. I actually have no server, you know, it's, uh, so no one uses it, I pay nothing. You know, so that's, that's, uh, that's um, we just thought that's, that's a very, very um, you know, very good way to, to develop software, you know. So then there's tutorials, we, 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 we write up fairly comprehensive articles in terms of how, uh, you know, to walk through the code, how to develop those applications and, you know, things like that. So yeah, that's it. You know, that's uh, um, you, you know. Um, sorry, I'm long winded at sometimes, but that's that's my baby, right? You know, that's my, you know, that's uh, that's my project. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's um, yeah. Uh, so if you have, uh, if, yeah, feel free to ask me any question. Yeah, this is great. I, I mean, I, I think it's uh, it, it it will be great for the CNCF. So are you are you thinking about uh, applying to Sandbox or for Sandbox and? And then you, do you know the process or, or? Yeah, so, so, so I think, you know, um, um, we are um, filling out the forms. I, I think that the next review date is uh, later this month, right? So, you know, so we still have time for the, for the next date, right? Okay, that's. I think well. so, I think so, yeah, yeah. There's a, I think there's a form that you have to fill out and, and then, uh, it gets considered by the TOC, and and then typically, if you have all the requirements like the README, um, and I think uh, you agree to the transfer of the assets and all that 
type of stuff that you do with open source, um, then it goes through and it gets accepted into sandbox. So, okay. um, and yeah. so yeah, and I think it would it would be great. I mean, the, the currently you there there are no um, projects uh, runtime for WebAssembly in the CNCF. So this uh, I think it will get uh, more exposure. Um, there, there's also some events at uh, KubeCon. Uh, there's a um, uh, cloud native WebAssembly day, I think it's called. So there's going to be more more um, presentations about the, the topic. And I'm not sure if uh, this, the CFP is available, but it, I mean, something to keep in mind if you if you want to present. Yeah, we'd love to. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's um, we definitely would uh, uh, apply for. For the sandbox, I think for consideration for, for the next meeting, you know, yeah, and uh, you know, to to participate in more CNCF, you know, activities. That's that's our goal is to, you know, engage the community. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And um, yeah, and it, also you can share these slides on on the Sig Runtime uh, Slack channel. So mm -hmm. if, and that's maybe some people are, might, might be interested in, and maybe they have, they have more questions. Uh, what not or maybe they can they can uh, actually contact you if directly excellent yeah so i put my contact information at, at the top of the slides and uh, you know and 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 share it yeah that's 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 a great idea all right well thank you very much and yeah and then we'll we'll keep in touch yeah so thank you and, yeah. Uh, yeah and hopefully you can you can travel soon too <laughs> Yeah, and I uh, hope we can all travel soon. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.